Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Unfiltered Tea. Of course, my nose itches. As soon as I say hello, <laughs> of course, my nose itches. Um, so, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna do that because nose is itch. There's no shame in an itchy nose. Don't panic. You're good. <laughs> the weather. I don't know where everybody is watching from. The weather here in Maine was spring like and now we are getting like 15 inches of snow today oh my god so <laughs> i did not know that part i knew it was cold i did not know that the the skin and the nose it's like it can't once once you're a lady over a certain age your body especially your face is like we're doing we're doing what now nope mm -mm. Uh, so, here in Virginia, we keep doing the same thing where it's like, it's spring. Just kidding. It's spring. Nope. <laughs> kill all the flowers. <laughs> and so my face is literally like, break out, dry out. Break out, dry out. Break out, dry out. <laughs> <laughs> I need to speak to someone. This is not working. Uh, somebody call the manager for the weather, please. Because even the dog today walked out and turned around and walked right back inside. Was like, nope. Not doing yep. it. Yep. Dear so. middle age, I, <laughs> I have completed my trial and I would like to cancel my subscription as I'm no longer interested in this product. Thank you. Yes. Mm. I second that motion. Um, so we are we are coming back to the um, wrong answers only trial. I mean, the Hannibal Harris <laughs> trial. They should have marketed uh, it that way. They really, I mean, real. I don't know how you term marketing for a trial because that's probably the wrong word. But to the extent that there is marketing, that's what they should do. I I agree. I mean, it, by day two, I was just like, so so this is just wrong answers only. Is <laughs> what is what we're doing. Um, by the end of it, I believe I refer to it as a dumpster fire inside of a flood I, I add some cursy words in there um no it was a shit show inside of a dumpster fire inside That's, of a yeah flood. there was a third That's layer i couldn't remember what it was there was definitely a third <laughs> layer to that so yeah so we did so part one we've done if you have not watched it go watch it um thank you to all of our new subscribers because a few of you found us okay. through that and that is wonderful so welcome um and uh because i thought of trying to summarize it and yeah it the the first few days were um I'll, i can see if i can do a short with a summary of it but it was nuts anyway we have that up um technology today has been fighting me on every level mm -hmm. so we're gonna hope that uh, I can run the video stuff the way we want to run the video stuff with us. We're we're gonna we're gonna hope um, the tech doesn't fight me so badly. Um, <laughs> but I have everything up, and we are now diving into part two, which is going to be day six, day seven, day eight, day nine, and day ten. I'm gonna try and remember to swoop between all of the days. I know I've mashed a couple days together in part one. It's, there's just so much to talk about. <laughs> there's so much. And yeah. So um, spoiler alert, like, the, well, we'll get to that. Sorry. My brain buffered. I apologize. That, that happens. Um, <laughs> so we're going to start at day six where we sort of ended our last show, where we were talking with Brian Carpenter and Armorer. Do we want to roll our intro before we get going? Yes. Yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Sometimes All it right. works. Sometimes. <laughs> so before we start day six, I'm gonna I'm run our intro. <laughs> and uh, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna say, do all of the YouTube things, like subscribe, all that, if you're liking this, do, do all the YouTube things, because I always forget to do that until somebody reminds me. So that's what we're doing. Indeed. 
and uh, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and hit me in tech. I almost I almost ran the outro, and that wouldn't have worked. So we're gonna thank we're gonna you for joining us. <laughs> intro here. Hello and welcome to The Unfiltered Tea, a show where we say all the things you wish the newscasters said, unscripted and unfiltered. We talk about news, politics, and entertainment, so pull up your soapbox, pour yourself a cuppa, and let's go. Yay! Yay! Okay, so let's let's go. Do I have anything ready to go? No. Would that made. make life easier? Yes. You got this. <laughs> uh, let's no, click the click click all the right buttons. Click all the right buttons. That share share that. There we go. Look at look at me. Yay! Look at me go. That is the smoothest technology has been all day. Um, do I know how to ensmallen? No, I do not. I don't know how to ensmallen us. I just want to point out, because I happen to pause on this, that is a shotgun. That's Hannah Gutierrez's face. So we're going to start at this lovely what's wrong with this picture moment. Shotgun. Face. Hey. Yeah, you can probably only see, if you have the same view I do, the very top of it mm -hmm. and her hand. And yeah, but that's, yep, that's all wrong. That's not how a person should ever hold anything that resembles a weapon, just on the off chance. Yeah, in case in case you were wondering why this went the way it did, um, that, that, that's, that is not what you do, even if you think it's empty. Just don't. Don't do that. Don't. Um, so we're going to start. We are still playing. We are still with Brian Carpenter and playing the what's wrong with this picture game with the prosecution leading, just le leading, leading <laughs> the way as she is wont to do. Um, so, yes, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to start playing. Do you see Ms. Gutierrez there? I do. And you've seen this video before, right? I have. I'm at eight seconds, just for the record. Zero. What is Ms. Gutierrez doing? She's holding that double barrel shotgun uh, pointed up at her neck and face. Why would that be concerning to you? Never let the muzzle of the weapon cover anything you're not willing to harm. It's a fundamental safety rule. You treat all weapons as they're always loaded, also fundamental safety rule. Mm -hmm. And functional, yes. Yeah. 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 How, how would you expect um, proper gun safety on a movie set if the armorer is not following basic gun safety? That's a, that's a very good question. It would be, um, it would be hard to implement. <laughs> All right, um, States Exhibit 152. I'd love to Whoa. know what she just said to her counsel. <laughs> <laughs> Can we say that wasn't me? <laughs> Any problem with that guy in that video? Same problem Same often. Guy. And I don't know where uh, Ms. Gutierrez is. Uh, of course, the camera's only facing one direction, so I, I don't know if she's behind He's me very behind kind me. to Hannah in and all of this. If she is this. present, she's supposed to do something about that, right? Well, you take the weapon up in between scenes. Uh, the, in between any usage on camera, you take the weapons up. Okay. Secure them. And what, and what? Because human beings, as a general rule, are not trusted. That's why you do that. Well, and to limit liability, I mean, to be totally fair, it's. Yeah. And it, yeah, it, anytime, like, again, so I, most of my experience in theater has been on stage. So often you have to have someone carry a prop weapon for longer than the actual duration of their use of it because they don't go off stage to collect it at a, at a good time. Um, I don't know if that made sense, but like if they, if they have to pull a gun in a scene that isn't coming up for another 10 minutes, but they don't get a chance to go back to where it would be safe to collect the weapon from for those 10 minutes, 
then they have to carry it for that whole time, right? Yeah. Um, even in those situations, you discuss pretty carefully, like, do we need some sort of, you know, holster or other piece of clothing that will allow them to hold it safely so that they don't, you know, so that they feel comfortable and safe. And I, again, I've never worked with even a replica. I've only worked with non-functional prop weapons um, that don't even have firing pins or the capacity to carry ammunition. But even then, because whether it's for the whether it's for the mentality of the actors and the people involved in the production or for the audience. I mean, as an audience member, you have no idea unless it's something that's very obviously like a water gun. You have no idea what's coming out on stage. And if an actor swings the gun around so that it points at the whole audience, that can be traumatizing for people. It can. Um, you really have to be, I mean, liability is a big piece of it, but also sort of mental safety is, is a huge piece of it as well. Which Sorry. oddly enough never I'm came up. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, this is why it's great because it's like, you're more active in theater. I was raised in the theater. So like, and for those wondering what's the difference when you're doing a theater show, it's the show from start to finish, you have props tables, you have things like that. Um, so everything is constantly moving in a, I imagine a movie set is similar, but when you can actually hit pause on the cameras and stuff like that, there are things that can be done while you're in the middle of shooting a scene or something like that to adjust, which, with a theater production you don't have you have to just it's why we have rehearsals it's why you have rehearsals for movies it's why um yeah. if you're doing extensive dance choreography you have safety meetings there too because yeah. if if it's something that somebody could be injured you want to make sure everybody is on the same page well and i i'm just going to take that one step further too i again no experience on a movie set with um, either fight or, uh, you know, choreography of any type that required this or um, prop weapons. But in stage, you start each performance day and the rehearsals that when you're actually running the whole show by doing a fight call, a weapons, you know, prop, prop yes. weapons check, a dance call if you have choreography that is challenging so that you make sure that everybody is up to the task that day. Nothing needs to be adjusted because somebody's under the weather or injured or, you know, other things like that. I would have to imagine that in film, you are meant to do the same thing. Like when we're getting together today and, and the difference, like you said, is that you're not necessarily running the film in order. You could be shooting scenes out of order or only part of a scene, et cetera. Um, but when you're getting ready for whatever the shot, the, the part is that's going to be filmed today, you should have those same types of, okay. Let's talk about the weapons that we're using today. Let's talk about any physical activity today that could be challenging and how everybody's feeling and maybe walk through it a couple times, all that sort of thing. Who's going to be there? What you need to do? What, I mean, you, you kind of have to take it step by step by step. I am very curious. I have a friend who is doing film festival things at the moment with a movie that was filmed last year that he is in. Um, <clears throat> and there are weapons in that movie. Mm. And I am very curious. I need to reach out to him and say, hey, do, do you want to come on and tell me what the experience was doing this? Because we're talking tiny indie, like same same sort of deal, small independent movie um made with all of these other things and a lot of tech and stuff like that so it it would be inter an interesting comparison for me um i don't know if they're up for that task but you know yeah. i might i might ask um <laughs> so and i have hopped ahead ever so slightly we can zoom zoom past this i think there's i'm looking for one spot and I don't know if I'm here. So we're gonna we're gonna guess because I wrote down timestamps, but not all my timestamps because because that wouldn't be any fun. 
There'd so, be no creativity. <laughs> there, there would be. There would be for creativity. <laughs> Why would we want me to have everything in order? I'm far more entertaining when I do not have everything in order. <laughs> I can attest to that. 100. <laughs> She can. She can. If I have all my stuff in order, I am way more boring. Um, so Assistant is all get out. <laughs> so uh, don't do that. All right. So we're going to see if I found the spot that I wanted to find. Um, and then if I haven't, we'll, we'll just zoom, zoom to probably Dave Hulse and Sarah Zachary because Dave Hulse got the sweetest of the sweet plea deal, mm. which mm. I'm salty about. So again, we go back to playing the video version of what's wrong with this game. <laughs> again, we have, we have to assume all weapons are always loaded. And in this case may well have been. Okay. We're going to take our morning bathroom breaks. Mm -hmm. Please don't talk among yourselves or anything. Oh, else come the on. See here, court. Jerks. All right. Hang on. Hang on. Me doing this properly? No. No. Why? Why would I? Why would I have that? We knew. We knew I was running a risk. All right. We're going to zoom, zoom past the break. There. Hey, that was pretty quick. I that sounded like the judge's coffee kicked in, I got to say. <laughs> no, 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 we're going to stop now. <laughs> what the? The ads, the ads when I do this. Sorry, I was doing it with an ad on my end. Hopefully none of you heard that. I, you know. I didn't, so I think you're good. I Hopefully. <laughs> this is why I pull it down to do yes. that because then it just goes into my ears and and I don't have everybody else dealing with it. So, all right, is this, I'm still not entirely sure I found the right spot, but I found a spot. Yeah, otherwise he can schedule for that. No, 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 I'm not sure. Oh, no, he's okay. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, uh, Thomas, uh, oh my good. What the? It'll, it'll get on you from there. It'll get on the wind. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't care how many times I've seen that. I I react badly every single time. Every part of my body just clenched. That's horrifying. It's I mm, okay. I'm I'm gonna have know, to play again. <laughs> I I think I said it before, but like aside from Hannah Gutierrez specifically, I don't know how that many people on that set, nobody said like, please point that at the ground. Please hold that a different way. Please stop. You know? <laughs> I mean, that that for me is where it's like, it not just her, like she's in the position where she needs to be the one stopping this. Yes. 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 Absolutely. 110% agree with that. <clears throat> However, how many, how many people are in here? We have one. I'm not going to count the kid because he's 11. And yeah. I'm I'm just not going to count him. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine behind the camera. Yep, at least. To be fair, um, they did the day before the actual incident with Helena Hutchins several people did walk off the set and despite what is being said in legal motions from the Baldwin and Gutierrez side of things, mostly Baldwin. Um, I feel like this had to have contributed in some way, shape or form like that, but that's just me. Um, okay. I also, I mean, no, uh, it's it's just my speculation, but why there wasn't something that was just a dummy prop that could be used when they weren't actually filming right. that was being interchanged? Because I do understand, like you want to make sure, especially with a long gun like that, that's that's 
unwieldy in a number of ways. So like rehearse with something else so that, that I mean, it can't be that hard to throw a couple of dowels together um, that would be the right length or something like that. Uh, so sorry, yeah. again, that's my, that's my stage manager side coming through. <laughs> Every time I've seen the muzzle of this weapon, I'm like, can we just give you a piece of wood, please? Exactly. Exactly. I think I think back to a theater show that I did once where all through rehearsal, and it was not a weapon. It was just we didn't have the actual prop yet. That will be yeah. a story down the road <clears throat> that I'm sure I will tell people because it's hilarious, but not appropriate <laughs> for this. Um, but we had we had a little piece of wood standing in for the prop until very very common the week before the show because we just didn't have it so yeah you can you can find something ladies and gentlemen you you can okay i'm gonna, I'm gonna hit play again i'm gonna i'm gonna do it Hit no go anything worrisome in that video my timing assuming today is behind camera then they would be prepping for that scene and everything would have been in place so no assuming she's there okay um let's tr uh, and let me let me ask you this in addition to seeing videos from the production outfitters behind the scenes uh collection have you also seen some of the actual movie takes that were filmed uh during the 12 days of filming for rust yes I'm going to play for you uh, States Exhibit 59, uh, which is going to be from that collection. There, uh, there was one additional. Uh, hey, Mark, stop. Hey. 159, I apologize. There was one additional uh, video in that exhibit. Are we continuing on with the uh, behind the scenes now? No, I'm going to, I was going to move us to, um, I was going to move us to the Rust okay. Productions videos. Yeah, okay. Sure. okay. Well, just a minute. So did, did you publish 158, I guess is the question. Is that what the question is? Yes, I published 158. Now we're moving on to 159. Um, and I, I, Mr. Carpenter, I think I understand your question. Let's go ahead and move on to these. Copy that. Okay. <clears throat> Mark. I figured out how to do a thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That, that. Right there. Action. This is where I wanted to get to. One more, one more, one more. I forgot to read close up. No, no, right away, right away. Let's reload. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. You should have two guns and both will be reloading. And hang on just a second. I, I think at the beginning, for some reason, it, what I want to show you is out of this frame. Bear with me. Mr. Bow, how can I do frame by frame? I'm going to try and zoom, zoom. Give me a second. Let me see if I can get this. Oh, I really like oh. her ring. <laughs> yes. Her style is very good. The poor eye. I, I can mm, get to I what I wanted to visit with you about. I was good. And for the record, I'm just fast forwarding frame by. This is where we can do this. I, I. No, you guys don't need to see that because we don't need to know <laughs> when I find the thing. Um, I can zoom zoom. I can zoom zoom. This is the advantage of doing something like this after. I am uh, not loving the way that those that that scene was handled. That the yeah, that was not realistic. <laughs> I no. Not realistic. No, it was not. We can, we can zoom zoom. Also, if it's doing the puffy thing like that, blanks, I believe, is what we learned in this trial. You mm -hmm. can't. You're the, firing blanks like that is a bad idea because that's just willy nilly. Everybody's close, but like, mm, no. I'm zoom zooming. 
Okay. Yeah, I would like to understand what kind of what what is making the plumes like not just blank, but what type of blank? Because yeah, that was there was a lot of yeah and words. I there, there were a lot of words that I don't know how to say right now, apparently. Um, words we learned a lot in this trial. Cock, half cock, full cock, <laughs> um, quarter load. And that was just load. describing Alex Baldwin. No. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to apologize Correct. right now to Alex Baldwin. I do not know him personally and cannot comment on his personality. Okay, sorry. I'm done. I, I can comment on... Uh, things that have been made public about his personality which do not put him in a particularly favorable light really ever really really ever um it's still with the phone call voicemail to his daughter that got released i've i've never i've never gotten over that like ever yeah. so okay I think so. Speaking of, we're we're gonna go well. That and him yelling that all of the guns should have been loaded or double. Like that is a line that hearing it for the I don't know fifth time now that I've done this. I'm betting that if the DA's office didn't mess up again, um, that uh, when Baldwin goes to trial, we're gonna hear that a lot on first hearing i was not 100 percent clear what he said mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah he said he says something about these should have been both these should have been loaded because he had oh. forgotten to do the recoil action he was just poop pew, 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 pew. i don't know what i just did there but hopefully <laughs> it was entertaining um especially if you're just listening to it uh but yeah so um if we, if we can't tell this this what what went wrong here game was uh riveting to me when i was watching this and listening to it the first time like this is stuff that i listened to when what actually happened and then watched recaps later because yeah uh, Huh? Uh, ah, ladies and gentlemen, tech me, me and technology, me and technology. You got that. You got it. Me and technology being friends. Are are we being friends? I'm gonna try and do something. Did I? That freeze frame uh -huh. is like her whole That's personality that. to me. <laughs> Isn't it though? <laughs> And I, I feel kind of shady. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Miss Prosecutor. Um, but it does kind of sum up your personality. It's pretty good. It, does. it actually kind of sums up everybody. Because I don't know what Hannah's team is doing back there. Uh, Bowles oh. looks like he's asleep. Because he <laughs> might be. <laughs> sorry, Bowles. I was very disappointed in your lawyering all through this trial. Sorry, that was very loud. I was I was incredibly disappointed in his lawyering. Um, so far, I can't help but agree. And whoever is on the far left of the defense table, um, like I like your style, and I'm old, and I was raised by people who spent a lot of their time in courtrooms, but that does not feel like courtroom style to me. Um, so. I'm just putting that out there. I don't mean to hate on anybody's style. It's just I, I don't know. That that feels not quirky. So I I can understand that. I I love legally blonde a little too much to um, go through and be like I I can't I can't love Elle Woods and diss on this. Her style is not my own. Um, it makes me wonder. Cause, cause I, I, I work in numbers. I kind of want to know where you're at, Miss Thang, for all your, all your fancy stuff. I'm here for it. Yeah. I'm not here for some of the commentary that was running in the chats about her. Um, and she oh. actually looks like she's working 
Like, I kind of wanted to see her do more lawyering than Bulls because I had, maybe she's an associate or apparently like I don't know what her position is I haven't looked her up so she might be in a position where she can't do the lawyering but I think she is part of the legal team and one of the attorneys on the team so I was wondering like why, why are you not getting up there and asking some questions because I feel like they would be fire and I would be here for them and we might actually get some interesting defense work well, that's, I certainly don't mean to call into question. They, they seem to be, as you said, very attentive, working hard, um, you know, present in the courtroom. Um, yeah, I, it's probably an old lady comment that I just made. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's just as, okay, as someone you. who hasn't spoken so far, all I'm getting of you is this way that you're presenting yourself, which if I met you literally anywhere outside of a courtroom, I'd be like, damn, nice, you know, but in a courtroom, it, you stand out. I'm not sure that that's what you want to do. It, it, that. That. Yeah. Exactly that. All right, Miss Carey, I will, I will end my, sh my shady pause. <laughs> my shady pause, Faith. It's not super shady, though. Like, it suits her. It does. It really, it really does, frighteningly. <laughs> it really suits her. I say tech, tech. Uh, it's difficult to see. You just see smoke over the lens. Having seen the other video, um, is it your opinion that that the smoke that we are seeing right here uh, is is from the gun being fired at the camera? Correct. I mean, the other the other camera told the story of what occurred there. You know, the more correctly. Okay. Oh, keep watching, Aurora. Remember, you've already seen this. You should know he provided. Hey, Mark. All right, States Exhibit 161. No, just... Yeah? When you drop your arm, that means he's 10 feet away. I can't see how close it is. I want to be almost up by the time he gets here. No, I'm going to go into this. Yeah. Well, let me show you something. Hold on. Step back to your original mark. So one 1,000, two 1,000, three... I'm getting up. Right. Then when he drops his arm, Helena get up. He drops his arm. That means Brady's close. I'm going to start to really get up. Okay. Do you see anything concerning here? He's uh, doing what we saw previously in one of the other videos with the stunt performer. He's using the weapon as a pointing stick. That's it's his finger. Um, and you've seen this video before. I have. And what is your understanding about what that gun's loaded with? Uh, it's loaded with probably full flash blanks, but blanks. Okay. Um, what when Mr. Baldwin behaves this way and is using the revolver as a as a pointer? What is the responsibility on the part of Ms. Gutierrez? To intercede uh, and correct uh, uns any unsafe behavior. Now, obviously, uh, again, we're talking about the nuances of doing it. I would start off pulling him aside or talking to him uh, individually and say, you know, if we could, let's be careful with that muzzle. Remember muzzle discipline. I even have a little thing that I talk to when I hand a, a weapon off to an actor. And that's what I used to say back in, the, back in the day. I would say control. And the actors would have to repeat the word control to me. And by repetitively doing that, it becomes a mental training technique to teach them that they are now fully in control of that weapon and their actions while they have it is, is, is on them. They're part of that other side of that coin we talked about. If moving past that, I was not getting any result on that. I would have to intercede on, in this on camera moment or in rehearsal moment. And then from there, it just depends on whether or not they want to be safe on scene or they want to find somebody else. Okay. Let, let me translate because first of all, that does happen in theater as well. It's a herd or a control or whatever. There's all sorts of things that you have with that. But let me, let, let me, let me just translate for this lovely man who is very articulate. If and you don't- is actually an expert. Yes, yes. If you do not shape up, if you do not start listening to my instructions, I take away the boomstick and hand you a carrot. That is what's going to happen. Like the actual bright orange vegetable. Yes. You get no you get no boomstick if you do not follow my rules. I will say that what every word that just came out of his mouth made me think of, well, every word that just came out of his mouth and what we've seen so far of Alec Baldwin on set mm -hmm. um, is it reminds me not of my theater experience, but of my corporate experience, where if you are not in your role given the appropriate weight and authority mm -hmm. by the folks in charge, then you're basically screaming at the sky 
and no one listens to you and then something goes wrong, which thankfully I've, you know, in my corporate life, it had rarely been a big thing that went wrong, but something goes wrong and everybody looks at you like, well, what? And you're going, I've been saying this for months, you know? So I know you mentioned that folks walked off the set, whatever that was about, uh, just makes me wonder. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't so far strike me that this is the defense that was taken up in this trial. Um, but if Gutierrez wasn't given enough, gravity, you know, allowed that sort of authority to pull an Alec Baldwin aside and say, you know, strike one, mm -hmm. kindly, professionally, yeah. but strike one, let's not do this again. Okay, strike two. Do you play baseball? Like, <laughs> um, do you know where this is going? Can you see the it, road ahead? Then it does become again. Again, I'm not trying to take the the importance of Gutierrez doing the job that she was supposed to do, but it does become something more like institutional failure to me, to my mind, than just the armor. I I absolutely agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. I just, I just love this lovely man. So we're going to watch him for a little bit longer because he's just, he's, ad I, he's adorable. I want like a pocket version of him in high stress situations. I feel like he would be great. <laughs> just have a little what pocket version. Brian <laughs> <laughs> Carpenter. <laughs> All right, we go ahead and play. Um from 23 seconds. Here we go, let's try it. Everyone Rolling just roll. need to be right here, like in the path of the gun. Could you please move? Did you hear that? I did. Um, tell us what's going on there. It sounded like Miss Gutierrez attempting to correct the fact that she knew that Baldwin, Miss Baldwin was pointing that weapon in an unsafe manner, and she was attempting to move the crew out of the path of where he was pointing it, and knowing that it was loaded with blanks. Is there a problem with attempting to move the crew? Uh, that's uh, the one of the two things that should be occurring. You identify the problem that created the fact that the crew was in an unsafe position, and then you clear out the crew. And she was attempting to, uh, I would assume, uh, not correct Mr. Baldwin, but try to make the crew in a, in a more safe position. Okay. Wonder why. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Check quarter loads, mm -hmm. is what she said. And do you know whether or not it was actually a quarter load? I do not know. Okay. Um, in terms of the timing of Ms. Gutierrez telling, and why don't you give the ladies and gentlemen of the jury an idea of how many people are behind this camera? So in a particular scene like this, assume they're shooting it with one camera, camera A, okay? Then you're going to have your sound, you're going to have your sound mixer, you're going to have your camera, your DP, director of photography, you're going to have your first AC, generally a focus puller, first assistant camera, you'll have a second assistant camera. Uh, more than likely wardrobe is going to be on set as well, hair and makeup as well. Um, uh, you could have even uh, PAs on set standing there. Um, so you're looking at anywhere in a scene like this between, you know, six and 11 people out there. Um, is there... It, is it advisable for explaining that? Props, of course, I love props. Out. Okay. Um, is it advisable for Ms. Gutierrez to wait until the last minute to tell the crew to get out of the way? No, the, the, the direction of firing should have been established prior to the scene. Uh, which way is Mr. Baldwin going to point that weapon? Which way is Mr. Baldwin going to discharge that weapon? Where he's going to walk and in what angle is he going to walk? His starting point, his ending point. And you take all of those things into consideration along with the type of load he's firing. And then you move your crew out appropriately. Locking. I took it. I'm going to shoot. It. So I, again, I don't know what the redirect or what the cross examination here is going to look like. But if I'm the defense, mm -hmm. I, I, I would say, do you, do you imagine under any circumstances that what you just saw Mr. Baldwin do was anything like what Ms. Gutierrez would have instructed an actor to do with a weapon? Because again, like, you're right, that all should have happened. And I don't know why we would assume that it didn't. Um, yeah, I. Exactly. Yes. I, I wish everybody in the world could have the experience of being completely fucking ignored by people who think they're better than you. I apologize for the salty language. Um, but people who think they're better, smarter, more experienced, whatever, just generally, <laughs> you know, superior to you. 
You, um, you mean like Baldwin mansplaining to two women police officers in his first police interview what weapons were? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I, I'm not trying to say that that's what happened because I wasn't there. I don't know. But it certainly seems like a way to establish some doubt about what has the the picture that has just been painted by the prosecution's expert? L literally, the defense's only job. Yeah, established out that yeah. that one job. That I'm sorry, I'm gonna be harsh on them because I do not feel like Hannah got a decent defense. That is, I maybe emotions work, not in the trial, and I I stand by my public opinion. Like, as a juror, I would have found the exact same um, verdict that the jury did find um, based on the fact that Bowles just never managed to establish enough doubt ever. I was not buffering. I was just, I'm still, it, it hurts my brain. It's one of those moments where I want to be the uh, doctor some I why can't I think of his name nightmare before Christmas where you can just open your skull and scratch your brain oh yes 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 <laughs> I can't remember his name either now <laughs> but yes I know who you're talking about <laughs> Dr. Dr. Frankenfurter is an entirely different movie entirely Indeed. different thing I digress I'm going down a rabbit hole we don't need me to go down I think <laughs> all right I I am Pulling this back. More more movie footage of yeah. No. So, oh, oh my, I can let Carrie ask the question. Um, maybe I will, I, I will, I will let Carrie ask the question. I will do that and then I'll pull that down and then I will. Then we can zoom zoom because this is the moment I wanted to get to. Um, yeah. I also um. Can you give us an idea? No, no, no. Keep go, going. Go. I no, no. It's stupid, Doctor Finkelstein. I looked it up. Thank You're you. <laughs> no, no. We we say these things when we think of them because that is how we roll. And you know what? I assume that our friends who have joined us and are hanging out with us for a couple hours to watch us do these things also do the same thing and needed <laughs> to know themselves. So um, You're welcome. were you faster than Mandy at looking it up? That's really the question. And yeah. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> back, back. All right. I will. Yes. Back Isn't to it important back to um, when we hear, when you're on a movie set and you hear the word cut, it, is it important that the actors not continue to fire the guns? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And then when you say cut, everything stops. And <laughs> it's not just from a creative standpoint, it's also from a safety standpoint. Keep in mind, you're dealing with stunts, special effects, explosives, et cetera, et cetera. So when the word cut is said, everything should cease immediately. So in this instance where Mr. Baldwin was firing the gun after the word cut, is there anything that you would have done? Uh, I, I would file that under the category of going, as the old saying goes, off script. He went off script there and fired for whatever reason that I guess he felt he needed to, but I would have probably said something to him about that as well. Afterwards? Afterwards. Okay. I would have asked him why he did it, and then, and I would have probably phrase it in a way that it was like, is something wrong with the firearm? Did you have it cocked? Was your finger still on the trigger? Why did that extra round go off at the end? Yeah. Um, now, now, you know this man also would have taken away the boomstick before yes. he asked those questions. Like, yes. you just would have taken it away and then asked those questions. Oh. 
I mean, that's, you know, sort of along the same lines as the whole control or whatever the, the phrase is that you say when you're handing off the weapon, you should, I would think that you would establish and get everybody used to the idea, even, even before it was the actual prop that, you know, okay, cut or end of rehearsal or whatever, you hand me the weapon, <laughs> you hand me the prop, then you go about your business. <laughs> Not, not yeah. anything other than that. That that's the first thing that happens. Um, but we don't know. We don't know what's happened on this set up until now. We we do not. We um, I we we might find out. I'm searching. I'm multitasking, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, we might find out. Baldwin goes. I do. I feel like I should give Bowles a minute with this man because he's sure. a great witness. Um, Excuse me. Even <clears throat> if. I And I'm intrigued to see what Bowles does. Yes. I, I have already watched not this, watched, but you haven't. <laughs> having not watched the ins and outs of the trial. Um, as I imagine anyone who's sticking with us for this this uh, Redux version also did not watch the ins and outs. So yeah, let's let's all yeah. enjoy understanding what the defense did with this witness. Yes, yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna give Bowles I'm gonna give Bowles a little bit of time here. Carpenter, sorry, yes, sir. I want to first talk to you about your experience and, and background. It sounds like you were in the police force. For, for how many years? I worked on and off in different law enforcement groups um, since about, I want to say about 94 up, and I would bounce back and forth to different, different departments. He did how not look old enough to do that. Uh, if you count total, I would say probably four or five. Okay. You were in SWAT? I worked on uh, New Orleans Police Department SWAT near Katrina. Okay, sir, and you were in Katrina? That's correct. And then you also um, worked after that. That's when you started in the movie industry. Yes, sir. Okay, sir, so how uh, would you say in total, how many years do you have firearms experience? Including film? Yes, sir. No, yes, sir. I would think. Makes me feel old. Probably 30, 30 plus years. Okay. And in 30 How? plus years, I take it uh, you've developed protocols, you've developed best practices over that time. That's probably evolved. Yes, sir. So, uh, sir, when you started, is it fair to say you probably didn't have those same practices you have now? That would be correct. Okay. And you've been trained both in the military, I mean, the uh, police and the film industry. And over time, you've developed those series of practices and protocols. Correct. Okay, sir. And do I understand from um, that there is no national certification of armorers? That is correct, especially in the southeastern United States. Okay, sir. And and that means there's no governing body that certifies how much uh, training or experience armorers have to have? Correct. Okay. And I know that you said earlier that um, 40 hours of training was something that you would think would, would be required. Is that, am I wording that correctly? Yes, sir. It's a minimum. Okay, as a minimum. Now, uh, and that's from your experience and background, but that's not in any kind of protocol or written format as, uh, in an armor. That's correct, sir. And those hours, uh, if I might add, would just be for safety handling. If you were going to additionally add the work as a professional armor, you would need some OTJ, some on the job training under tutelage. Okay, sir. So ideally, there would be a national body that would have a set hours, 40 hours minimum, then on the job training, uh, a certain amount, and that would be the practice before an armor is certified. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, at the time of this movie, uh, obviously in 2021, that was not the case. Is that correct, sir? In the best of my knowledge, yes, sir. Okay. And also, there is a difference, uh, is there not, between union and a non-union armor? Well, you can be in the union and work on a non-union show. Uh, the uh, union armors, depending on which union you're in, like the 44 out of California has different regula regulations, different safety standards. Uh, so really, is the point of union gauges and follows the craft a little bit better, but it kind of interchanges depending on which job you want to work on. Okay, now when you know uh, from working over the course of your career, there's different tiers. There's lower tier movies, lower budget, and there's higher tier movies. Correct. Okay, sir, and I think you said that uh, in your practice now, where you're at now, you try to work with the higher tier movies. Is that right? That is correct. Okay, sir, and, and you're established. You have your production company. You try to work with the uh, reputable suppliers like ISS, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, you're aware from your experience that that people just starting out that may be working on these lower tier movies, you're not going to have the kind of resources management support, that kind of thing. Is that a fair statement? It would be. Okay, sir. And on those lower tier movies, would you agree with me? A lot of times there's, because they're lower budget and because of how they allocate funds, there's unsafe practices that may occur. That is correct. That would... I take issue with bulls on that. 
Yes. But also, like, that's the worst defense that you could possibly have. Like, so clearly, you know what the fuck you're doing. Did you always know what the fuck you're doing? Because some people don't. They have no earthly idea what they're doing. Also, um, despite the appearance of this well-known actor in this movie, uh, clearly, this is a small-scale production film that doesn't have money. I know. What? What? Mm-hmm. None of that absolves your client. Not one piece of that absolves your client. It, or That's- causes doubt. Or it, it's like, so she did it because she was, like, it. Yeah, you're making it worse. She's inexperienced? Let's talk about that <gasps> longer. What the? Mm. 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 Nope. <laughs> Tired. Um, let's let's see what the well dressed woman t- person Dan is right can do. Can we get that person up and talking? I no, wish I there was one other person who also was not not. Uh, I mean, slightly better. Than, but yeah, so it goes like that. That's that's the line of questioning. He almost gets there a couple of times because it is something to be said of like, okay, it's an independent movie. Ask more questions about union oversight. Oh, Mandy has suddenly entered the witness protection program. I'm sorry for uh, safety. (laughs) I will be, I'm going to, I'm going to pause my camera, but I'm still here and I'll fix this and be right back. We we did not have a safety meeting about the rain light, Mandy. (laughs) It wasn't loaded. It's okay. It wasn't loaded. <laughs> dropping. I'm dropping the ball. I'm dropping the ball over here. Oh, and while Mandy is searching for that, I am going to. Nope. Come back up here. We're no, gonna... All that does is say that your client didn't know what the hell they were doing. I don't like. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. There was some potential validity to the idea that there is no standard of practice or standard of training or like all of those things, good information, helpful. But the whole line of questioning around, (laughs) did you always know to do the things that you just suggested my client? Cause she knew. She brings thinking new. That's not helping you, sir. Mm -mm. Should she have had a mentor on this set? Yes. Or should someone with more experience than have been hired for that primary role? And yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it is it good defense work to like you can ask those questions where it actually is better defense work of given everything is this because it's an independent would this be a good opportunity for her to learn? Right. Oh yes. Okay. Would you put that with production? Like who who would you put that? Who normally makes that decision? If you're an armor and you're coming in and you're mentoring somebody, who typically makes that decision? That is a good question. Yes. Also, I mean, I still want to take down and, and maybe maybe I am wrong and that's why this wasn't pursued. But I still want to chase down the idea of like, did Gutierrez try and take any of these tacks with any of the actors or stunt people who were using, carrying these props? If so, like, were they backed up? If somebody says, F you, I'm not doing that, then what What happened after that? Did the director or anybody else that Gutierrez might have been reporting to on set go, I don't know what to do, good luck. I, all of that is important uh, to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and those, those questions were never asked well enough to give us good answers. Yeah. Also, I will say to everyone watching out there that in my humble experience, if ever you are in a situation where you're taking on this kind of liability, document everything. Yeah. Do that. is not sufficient. You have a conversation and then you follow it up with a text or an email that would be entered into evidence if ever you were brought to court. 
Yep, because your text. I don't know your, but I promise you, it will help you. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's always a good idea to start documenting if things don't feel quite right on pretty much anything because, yes, and and this is also a good reminder. Again, neither one of us is an attorney, um, but I I watch a lot of court stuff. Um, and attorneys on the YouTubes. And so this is an excellent reminder, always text or email as though it might one day be read aloud in court because yeah. you never know what you will end up in the proximity of Indeed. where somebody subpoenas your phone. Um, oh, and fun fact, if you delete it, it's still there. It's still there. And they can find it. Um, so, yeah, your tech will always tell on you. So even if you turn your tech off, a lot of times if you turn your tech off, that's telling on you too. Uh, look mm. at, looking over at Idaho there. Um, or Murdoch. Murdoch is a, is a big case of that. Um, so I'm looking at our time and I'm looking at the hard stop that we have. So I'm going to try and zoom zoom because we're still stuck in day six and we have Dave Holt and we have Sarah Zachary to cover. Um, we got this. We got this. We can, we can zoom zoom. I am going to skip over John Ziello, who is lovely key rigging grip on rust he was also in the church because apparently everybody and their brother was in the church for this incident except hannah which mm -hmm. i find it whoever it, let that be okay is a problem yeah I, I have a serious problem with that for many many reasons one it was never clear that it was her choice um it was never clear that she was just it, it's conspicuous. It is conspicuous how many people were in that church and she wasn't for COVID protocols. Well, and I know there was a lot of talk about her physical and mental state day of. Yeah. Um, and I will just say, even at our best, none of us are, well, I won't say none of us, most of us are not psychic. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. It is some, it is, you know, whoever in most cases, you know, live theater, I would say stage manager, it's like a production assistant or somebody's job to say what we are working on right now requires these people for safety and effectiveness and, blah, blah, blah. and to tell those people, this is what's happening. We need you here. And then to make sure before you start, whatever it is that's happening, that those people are there. That's, my experience anyway that's how that's supposed to run that that is absolutely how that is supposed to go and so yeah the, really strange that she was not in the church oh yeah this is this is why my thing for the entire time and i will not change this until baldwin goes to trial and we and or we get all of the evidence um that proves if somebody says to me this was not just, if somebody so far all of the evidence points to this was a terrible 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 accident that never should have happened yes if somebody brings evidence of other more nefarious things happening i also would not be surprised there's enough weird things that all line up that i have questions <laughs> i have serious yeah serious questions like oh all of the cameras for video village are gone the day that this happens because a bunch of people walked off the set for safety and took all that equipment with them so all of the video stuff that was set up in the church the day before is now gone completely so there's no video of this at all because it also wasn't a filming scene so there's no video of any of the incident. You that's have 27 funny. people. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's I. This is all more detail than I've heard before on this. The day mm -hmm. of, um, we've heard a lot. Uh, I, having not followed the trial before you, and I started doing these two videos on it. 
had heard a lot about the behavior on set generally, but I had not heard a lot of the details about day of. So I didn't mean to interrupt 27 people in the church. I made that number up. Okay. I, I, I made that number up. Thank you. That's Thank why I was you. checking. That's why I was Thank checking. you for clarification. No, I <laughs> made that number completely up. Um, a lot, a lot of people. There was Baldwin, Dave Halls, The Grip, um, Helena, Joel. I'm at five already. We learned there was a still photographer in there. So I'm at six. That's weird. Okay. Yeah, exactly. A still photographer. And again, like, huh? Why? I don't. Okay. And yet there is no video, photos, no, nothing in and around. Like, it is weird how, mu how much information we have, how much video we have, general cell phone stuff that we have. And this actual, it's, it's like, there's nothing. And that for me, I can't, it doesn't sit right. It doesn't sit as just a coincidence. It doesn't sit yeah. as normal. It sits as there is a puzzle piece that nobody has uncovered yet. And yeah. it could just be accident. And all the evidence leads to accident. But it doesn't feel comfortable, if that makes no. sense. It, yeah, it, it feels too coincidental. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So with that, we are going to zoom, zoom. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to skip over the rigging grip because I don't think in our zoom, zooms we need to go through his testimony he seemed like a very lovely man he did he ran into the church when the incident happened as opposed to several others that ran out um and he he was lovely to witness on the stand however what we're where i'm skipping ahead to is dave hulse the first ad on set the safety supervisor who got the sweetest of the sweet deals. So in theory, the gun, depending on whose testimony you're listening to, either Hannah handed Baldwin the gun and he went into the church and the incident happened, or again, depending on who you're listening to, Hannah handed the gun to Dave, uh, to, uh, to Dave Halls, who then handed it to Baldwin, who said cold gun. Um, and yes, Mandy has reminded me that I, I need to, I need to swoop, swoop, um, for all of our sakes. No, hit the, <laughs> I, I can do this tech. I can, I can <laughs> do this. All right. Um, so I am. So, yeah, this is Dave Hall's six months unsupervised probation is what this man got. Six, six months unsupervised probation. I still have questions. I still have questions. I do, too. I would let this. Do you swear firm under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, have a seat talking to the microphone. Thank you. Would you like some water, sir? I would, please. Okay, thank you. There's a quarantine. Can you just one moment to swap out my notes? You make me mad, sir. Yeah. Everything Stick about it for the the David John Halls. Mr. Halls, what do you do for a living? I am retired. I was a uh, first assistant director mm -hmm. on motion pictures and television. Programs. How long were you a first assistant director? <sighs> oh, no, 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 Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Yeah. I can't help it. For when motion pictures, he... uh, 94, since 1994. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, what? No, no, I was just because we were paused for a second. I was gonna opine. I as soon as he walked yes. in, 
I went, oh, an old white man figures. Yeah. Yeah. Older, yeah. excuse me, older. I am I am becoming an old white lady, so gotta be careful where I throw those stones. <laughs> Funny so far, so far the older white men um, that have anything to do with this, and Joel Souza not included because you know he went to the hospital after being wounded in this incident. So I am leaving him out of this. Uh, but yeah, they they all seem to be okay. Oh, funny, you retired? Yeah, because you were never going to work again. You think? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, I retired. You say that like it was a choice, sir. Yeah. I have been retired. <laughs> like, my public opinion and uh, my petition. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um. Oof. Yeah. All right. All right. I will give him, I will give him a few minutes and then we will zoom, zoom to some bowls after this because I, it, um, Mm. And I'm going to ask you to move that microphone a little closer to you, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and in October of 2021, were you employed on the set of the movie Rust? I was. And were you employed in that capacity as a first assistant director? I was. Can you explain to the jurors what a first assistant director does? A first assistant director um, will uh, is responsible for creating the schedule. Uh, First assistant director will do that in collaboration with the, the director and, and producers. Um, that's a, a, a process of taking the script and, and breaking it down. And um, what what actors are going to be needed in, in, in which scenes, what props are going to be needed, what pieces of wardrobe are, are going to be needed, what special effects will be needed. And that is all broken down into a, a software program that's pretty universal in the industry. And that generates documents that can be uh, uh, distributed to the different departments, the different department heads. And uh, and my department, the, the first assistant, the assistant director's department is kind of the a contact point for the cast. So it, it's really a position of disseminating information. This is all during the, the pre-production process. And then once uh, production shooting begins, the first assistant director would be I an analogy would be you're you're the the shop foreman or the site foreman you're you're overseeing and making sure that the production is following the schedule that things are moving efficiently and that people are given the cast crew are given and the are safe that they need to know safe you're missing the and safe sir, part, as the sir. first assistant director on the set of rust were you what's called a safety coordinator yes that oh, is sorry like Harry asked and, and what do you do as a safety coordinator it's uh, to make sure that the, the different departments and, and cast are, are are following the the safety protocols. That mm -hmm. there there are written safety protocols that are produced in uh, an alliance between the, the different uh, unions and guilds in the industry. Screen Actors Guild, the, the, the unions that represent the technicians. Um, Can we see those, please, sir? Just to observe to make sure yeah, that you have them Can mitigating we... any 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 safety risks. Oh. Um, Hilarious you mean like you did trial. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am. Whew. Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm going to try and tone down my swearing, but I'm losing it over here. Uh, that question really should have been, what should you have done yes. in your role yes. as a safety coordinator? What? And yes, I would like to see these documents that were generated. I also would like to go back to our previous expert that we were just watching and ask if it's typical on a film with this many uh, prop weapons to have just one person, because he was talking about like, you know, the directors and the heads of whatever. And as right. far as I understand it, Hannah Gutierrez was the armorer and that was it, right? She She was hired on as a props assistant and then was given the armorer job. But there, so she, there was no one else working in that capacity. It was just her, no, correct? It was just mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's typical. Uh, yeah. I and I, I believe that Sarah Zachary helped out sometimes. Um, okay. But Sarah Zachary was the props person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and it's 
it's not uncommon again in live theater at least for there to be crossover between props and costumes props and you know safety concerns all those sorts of, there are many things that can cause a safety concern on a production right it doesn't just yeah. have to be the fact that there is something that is made to look like if not function like a weapon um and it's not unusual for those responsibilities to cross multiple departments um but yeah anyway sorry i'm back on that soapbox that i promised you i put away oh no 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 we are we are here we have it in our intro mandy we're here for the soapbox that that's <laughs> we are here for the soapbox i have lost a day of notes Okay, I found it. I think I think my, my super professional notes over here. Um, all right, I'm going to give David Hall's just a little a smidgen, a yes, smidgen more time, and then um, yeah, can we can we do this in two parts? We can. I'm going. Did you feel personally um, up until October 21st that? Rust was a relatively safe set. I did. How, um, sir? How? Did Sorry. you yourself have any concerns about um, Ms. Gutierrez's uh, behavior as armor? I did not. And are you there? <laughs> That's my question. <laughs> is part of your role as the first assistant director to be a part of the a uh, safety check of firearms that that's taking place on set. Yes. yes. Uh, can you just describe for the jury generally the way that 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 should work? Yeah. Uh, I was going to say typically, but usually all the all the time, whenever there's a, a firearm on set. I do, I do not work with a lot of first assistant directors, but I, I am sure that this is a protocol that all assistant directors uh, follow that whenever a firearm is, is on set, mm -hmm. I, I make an announcement in the, in the case of rust, I, I had a wireless microphone that was connected to a, a, a public address, a speaker system. So everybody could hear and gen, and all the time, whenever there was a firearm on set, I would make an announcement. There was a firearm or firearms on set. I'm inspecting them with the armor. If any, if anybody else would like to inspect the gun, now would be the time. And you're certainly welcome to do that. Um, I would also, if there was ever an incident where the, the firearm had to be fired, a blank, um, I would make that announcement. There will be live live fire in this shot. Uh, ear, ear and eye protection are provided. Please, please protect your ears. On the set of Rust, can you tell the jury what the safety checks with Ms. Gutierrez consisted of? It's It's... It's really what I just said that whenever. Uh, and let me let, let me stop yeah, you and yes. ask a, a more pointed question. I, I guess what I'm interested in is, did Ms. Gutierrez load the gun in front of you uh, on uh, on any occasion? Um, just kind of walk us through your experiences with blanks, with dummies, with Ms. Gutierrez, um, and and let let's for the purposes of these questions, let's assume that, that there's going to be blank firing. Okay. Objection. Um, Leading. We assume there's going to be blank firing uh, prior to I have the handing the button. gun. Uh, objection. Uh, leading. Um, this is five questions wrapped into one. Could mm -hmm. we take one question at a time, please? And can you specify times and instances to which you are? I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but you just basically gave him carte blanche to be like, well, this one time. No, <laughs> um, I would like you to ask a more specific question, please. Your question is too general, too vague. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, you know what he didn't do? Any of the things he said he should have done. No. Yeah. Did you follow any of those protocols on the days that we just watched videos of? Because I was watching the videos and he wasn't. He was there. You can see him there. There was no He's announcement. Not People were not behaving as though they were aware that there was live fire or blanks or whatever. Nope, nothing. That I, for me, that's one where I'm like, were you were you there? Were you there? Because we have video of you being there, but was it actually you 
Is there an alternate universe? Are you in a few there? state of some sort? Were you on, you know, migraine medication that may have clouded your ability to function like a normal person? And I, Bulls, like, come on, that question was terrible. Terrible. Object. Yeah. We, we knew to object. We're not lawyers. There, but there, if, there is at least one thing wrong with that question. If I can find 10 things wrong with that question, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but there has to be something wrong with that question. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 10 out of 10. Agree. Agree. <laughs> My pause game with Miss Carrie here is uh, pretty spectacular, if I do say so myself. Indeed. I've not done as well with others, but with her, I do pretty to well. To an actor, is there a safety check that is done with you and Ms. Gutierrez? Yes. She, she, show me that there, there's an empty gun at that moment before she would load the blank round. She would also show me the barrel of the gun to make sure that there's no obstructions in the barrel. And so let me ask you, um, when yeah. she would show you the barrel, you asked were you able questions. to see all the way down the barrel? On, on, on the revolvers, I, yes, I, I certainly was. Uh, I, I recall there might have been a, a rifle that I might not have been able to get a, you know, a clear to, to see light at the end of the barrel. Okay. Um, so that's on you to actually, you know, not give up until you see the light. Come on, man. Sorry. <laughs> I, yay, 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 yay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to zoom, zoom a little bit. I should spend more time with him, but he makes me so angry. He didn't do his job. He got a sweet, sweet plea deal. He didn't, he didn't do it. I'll give him a couple more minutes. I will, I will stop. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. We're just going to let him make me mad again. She loads the, the gun with the blanks in front of you. Is that right? Yes. And then what happens then? And then she would give it to the actor. And none of which we saw in the video. Was it in your mind permissible for her to then walk away and go do something else? During the moments of, of a live fire? Sure. No, not acceptable for her to walk away. Okay. Um, let's talk about instances where a gun would be uh, loaded with dummies. Yes. Um, when you would do the safety check with Ms. Gutierrez, would she load the dummies in front of you and shake them so that you could hear that they were dummies? There were only two occasions where dummy rounds were used. On, let, me, on let, let, me, let, me, let me stop you right there. <laughs> when you say there, was, there were only two occasions that dummy rounds were used, how do you know that, that dummies were in the guns on those two occasions? Is it because Ms. Gutierrez approached you and told you? She, she did. Okay. Uh, do okay, I'm interjecting with another question. Carrie, give the man a minute to answer your question. Carrie does it, Bulls does it. They they come in and they ask a question, and then there's like a minute where, in the case of Dave Hulse, I'm going to make certain assumptions. I he's thinking of the right thing to say. And yeah. it takes him a minute. And before he can get to the right thing to say, she jumps in with what she wants him to say. <laughs> yes. I mean, honestly, it it makes me wonder about his, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Competency? Mm -hmm. The way that she's handling this. Like, wait, 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 don't go off the rails. Wait, wait, wait. Let's try this again. Um, yeah, it just yeah. feels a little anxious. Yeah. It, um, mm, mm. She, would, how, mm. <laughs> boy, he makes me mad. He makes mm. me mad and I can't form a proper question. Um, would you, would you like more of the prosecution with him? Or would you like me to skip ahead to some cross examination? Um, let's. I'd like to see him actually. I don't know. Answer a couple of these questions if we ever get there. So let's give him another. I don't know, minute or less. 
and then, but I do want to see the defense of him too, if that's okay with you. Oh, absolutely fine. <laughs> I hit. I hit that. Would you know if there were times that she would dummy up the guns and not bring them to you and not tell you? No, the, the, the normal every day, every moment that there was a firearm that was being handed to a, an actor, she would always bring the, the, the gun to the firearm to me and we would do an inspection of the, of the firearm. And you only recall two instances where firearms were dummied. Yes. And was one of them on October 21st? Yes. And the other one, did that involve uh, a revolver or, or or a long gun? A long gun. Okay. Um, so let's talk about October 21st. I wanna, I'm going to start with you um, after the lunch hour. What was happening after lunch? What were we doing there? We were preparing a shot for... Mr. Baldwin's character, it, it, he was sitting in a pew. He's been on the run. He's taking refuge in this this old church. And he's sitting in the pew. And, the, and the, what we were photographing, I'm sorry, I'm trying to avoid the word shot. Um, we were preparing for the shot of Mr. Baldwin sitting in the pew. It was basically from his waist to the top of his head. And, and his action was just to pull out the revolver. And in the story, he's pointing at He's pointing the revolver at two U.S. marshals that that have come into the church. Okay, um, that that was what you were intending we're, to do. That's what we were preparing to. Yes, lighting. Yes. Um, and this has been referred to as blocking the shot. Is that your recollection? You could re refer to that. You could say that. Yes. Can to Can I just? There's been a lot of talk about rehearsal. And I, I just like to clarify if that's okay. With let me you. Let, let's let's finish this line of question yeah. first, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so, was this a rehearsal or was it just setting up the shot? Immediately after lunch, we were setting up the shot. Mr. Baldwin was not called to set. And is that common that that? It, 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 was Mr. Baldwin considered first team? That is what we refer to in the motion picture industry. That is what we refer to the cast as first team. Okay. Um, so when the shots being set up, is first team usually there? No. Okay. They don't come in until it's ready, ready to shoot. Yes. I, I mean, there, there, are, there are occasions that we might have shot a, a, a shot with, with cast, and now we're going to shoot, we're going to do it at a different angle and do lighting, and they might stay, stay there. Okay. It just depends on the amount of time that we that okay. would be needed to light prepare the shot. But Mr. Baldwin was not present at that time. So on October 21st after lunch, they're setting up. This leads me to even more questions, by the way, because for what they were doing, why was he there at all? And yeah. well, he just said he wasn't called to set, but I, did he say they were taking a still? That that's what they were preparing for? I need to rewind it. We can rewind it. I don't want to like totally throw us off the track, but why the f would you need a loaded weapon for a still? You don't. That's like, my point. None of this. None of this. This wasn't even going to be shooting a scene. Yeah. And also, I understand why they're trying to avoid the word shooting and shot, but kind of hard to do. And when you're it talking about a film. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a movie. Let me see if I can. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna my pause game with her is on <laughs> point. I on actually point. that is the face I was making the whole time he was <laughs> speaking. So I'm with her on this one. Yeah. Oh. And, and like, bowls. Oh, I'm sorry, bowls. Yeah. That was kind of a shady. I but I also um, the camera went to Hannah for a hot minute there. And there was so much that I couldn't tell if it was like, why is the camera on me right now? Or if it was a reaction to let's talk about October 21st or like, but there was a lot going on. It felt like mm -hmm. when, when she was the focus of the camera. Anyway. Yes. So let me. I'll, let... I'll just not good. <laughs> no. It's no. all not good. Can I do this? Can I do, can I? I don't want to go way back. The shot. Uh, no. do you, do you, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I have tried to tech <laughs> things that I can do on my iPad. I we can't. don't we don't need to go back for it. I think we've established that there are a lot of questions about why things were the way they were <laughs> that day. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And but I definitely clearly heard this gentleman say that Hannah went through the proper safety check before handing off the weapon on uh -huh. October 21st, which I think that's all I needed to know. I'm not sure. Now, if you were a defense attorney, is, is that one of the places that you would go to? Indeed. And, and then I don't know if the prosecution covers this, but then, you know, well, tell me what happened after that safety check. Uh huh. That yeah. that would okay. that would be that would be the correct next question. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what we get, but that that, in my opinion, that would help me if I were on the jury. Indeed. Figure out how to apply the law to what happened on the set. <laughs> Recall who was uh, in the church. I do. Go ahead and tell us who you recall being there. Not 27 people. That was me making a Sergeant, number um, Joel Souza. Serge Svetnoy. Did you, say, and I'm gonna, did you say Serge Svetnoy? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Ross Adiego, Reese Price, Thomas Gandy, Roman Gandy. This is during preparation, mm -hmm. okay? This is pretty uh, Mr. Ballin arriving on set. Um, I believe the, the microphone boom operator, Zach Sneeby, might have been in the room at the, in the church at that time. Um, was Ms. Mitchell in the church at that time or not yet? I, I don't recall seeing her okay. at that time. Okay. Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, Mr. Souza would not have been. I don't think he was in the church during the preparation. Okay. Time. So... At what point in time do you have contact with Ms. Gutierrez? So when Mr. Thanks. Baldwin was called to set, when he arrived on the set. Who called Mr. Baldwin to set? I did. Um, did you at the same time Why? make any request for the armor or armor services? I did not. Did you ask for the gun? I did not ask for the gun. And why wouldn't you have asked for the gun? Because it's, it's normal procedure on certainly all of the productions that I've worked on with firearms. And the, the, it's not just for firearms, it's for props and wardrobe that when, when first team is called to set, it's announced over a walkie talkie. The first assistant director would go onto the walkie talkie and say, camera is ready, first team, please. This, this alerts all the different departments, certainly costumes, because they're going to need to do whatever, put a piece of uh, costume on, on the actor, make adjustments, hair and makeup. You're gonna, they're going to need to do their touches, props. They're going to need to give the prop that's needed to the actor. And, the, and this is also a signal, a cue to the armor that the actor that needs the firearm is going to be on set and I should be there. The armor, as me, the armor, I should be there to give the gun to the actor. Okay, so you didn't actually call for the gun, but you agree that Ms. Gutierrez may have understood that it would be time for her to come into the church. Yes. Okay. Mm. I, and the, and sidebar because they acted like children, yeah. um, and so the judge still won't let them try and get more information. Won't let them the play. Church. Yeah, <laughs> I'm rubbing your glue in front of the jury. <laughs> Yes. Yep. I, I also, if no filming was going to be happening, why is Baldwin being called the set? This is something that can be done with a stand-in. Why is he there? Why are we not answering these questions? And the, well, she should have just assumed to arrive with the gun. That's not acceptable, especially if you've already said you're a safety coordinator. And also, he made this whole big deal about having a wireless mic and it was over a PA system, but now we're walkie-talkies? 
Thank I, I you. Want to establish, I want to establish that Gutierrez had a fucking walkie talkie. I'm so sorry. I keep swearing. I'm not usually this bad, but this makes me angry. Um, but yeah, we need to establish that Hannah had a walkie talkie at that time, knew that she needed to be paying attention at that time, knew that whatever was the, you know, that the schedule was as the schedule was, that that had been communicated to her. Like, I would like to see someone establish a trail of how we got to a loaded weapon in Baldwin's hand on October 21st. I don't know why we're not coming at that more directly from either side, honestly. Uh, yeah, the prosecution I, should want to establish that pretty strongly too, unless no trail exists and it's all just in the ether, you know? I'm sorry. I, it's so angry. <laughs> oh, angry. You can imagine, you can imagine what it was like with me. I mean, you remember when I was following Depp Heard. Yeah. You remember the stuff that yeah. came out of my face. You can imagine what my coworkers were dealing with as I'm sitting there working. What the what just happened? <laughs> What's going on, Aurora? Watching a trial? Uh-huh. <laughs> How's it going? Not, not well for the defendant. Not at all well. <laughs> not, not well in general. That, yeah, not well, not well in general. Um, Excruciatingly painfully. Thanks so much for asking. <laughs> oh, oh God. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to skip ahead to some attempts at bulls. Defending. Do it. Do it. Maybe. Possibly, can we get there? What? No. Do I need to one day actually subscribe so that I don't get the same level of ads? Uh huh. I I I absolutely do. Um, <laughs> have I done that yet? Nope. Nope. I have not. I promise. I'm working on it. There's other things that are happening. Um, what mm, I, mm, do, do, do. <laughs> I'm buffering. Hi, hitting play there, hitting play. Dave, Dave, talk, talk to us. Pull again. a picture to show you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is that part of the Zoom meeting where somebody's trying to share their screen. Yes! But cannot successfully it's... do it. And everybody else is just staring at them like, you guys, I want to show you come on. Until <laughs> you could take a look at that. Yes. And you recognize Why? That. Why do we just have yes, computers it's very similar to the dummy rooms, roaming it? the so, courtroom? Okay. So yeah. that, if I may show the jury room, this is State's Exhibit 26. Sir, you, you indicated that, that that is a picture of a round of some kind. Thank you. you indicated that that resembled the round we're talking about. It resembles the dummy rounds that I saw. The okay. ends of the dummy rounds that I saw. The five dummy rounds. Yes, sir. Does it resemble that that sixth casing? No. Okay. So it it looked even different than that. Than what we just saw. It didn't look like that. It did not look You're like. You're not that. helping okay. bulls. Okay, we may come back to that, but I appreciate that explanation. Now, let me ask you some preliminary questions about your background. How long have you been in the film industry? We I covered this. started in the film industry, I think around 1985. Okay. So, didn't we? Um, yeah. 40 years? Yeah. Or yes, over 40 years. Like 40, math. yeah. 40, sir. 40. So 40. I can't 2020 20 math either. It's okay. Retired from the industry. Okay, somewhere in there, almost 30 years. <laughs> Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and you've been in a first assistant director for quite hard. some time. How many years have you done that? S since the mid-90s, since about 1995. How many uh, films over the years have you worked as a uh, as a first assistant director? Do you, you recall? I don't have okay. a number, really. I don't. It's That's over 20. It's over. It could be 30. I, I, okay. You I have an IMDb page. I've checked out on a date. <laughs> 
Okay. That little smile is a little... I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Sorry. If you don't want to go to prom, I totally get it. I totally get it. I would really have to sit down and do the and look at um, my resume. Um, for for sure, ten. For okay. Yeah. Uh, and we're just. I'm not holding you to a number, but of those ten. Fun fact: literally everyone from the set of Rust who testified, with the exception of Joel Souza, Russ Adiago, Adi I said his name very badly. Um, <laughs> the the ones that we liked, Mamie Mitchell, the the really solid witnesses, no offense, Dave Holes, but nobody liked you. Um, uh, you did not give off a warm, caring vibe at all um they all padded their imdb on a level that is just it's, it's a game at some point we will make it a game and we will just i'll get actual good time stamps and i'll take the copious amounts of time to find the things and we will go through and we will see what they say and then we will pull up their imdb page and see what the imdb page says Indeed. I am looking right now. So, so IMDB for, for David Halls does uh, conflate second unit director or assistant director into one category, but it's way more than 10. It is many, many more than 20. It's a lot. Uh huh. <sighs> and it was approximate 10. Have you ever worked on a set where there's been a part time armor? No. So then Rust why would you do that? That's my next question. The next question is why on the set of Rust do you have a part-time armorer? Sorry, Bulls, did you ask that question? First time you've ever been on a set involving somebody doing armor duties and something else. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Here you were <coughs> aware why? that Ms. Gutierrez Reed was performing functions of armor and props assistant. I was. Okay. Now, sir, as I understand, you did not have any concerns during the rest set about Ms. Gutierrez Reed's work. I did not. Did you believe that she Thank was you. diligent in her checks of firearms and stuff? I did. Okay. When Thank no you. further okay. questions. Done. You are done. Stop asking questions <laughs> or ask other ones. Okay. Well, it's, he seems to be chasing these two tacks of like, you know, it's sort of like before with the she doesn't have much experience line of questioning. Not mm -hmm. that he ever came out and said that, but right. that's where that line of questioning was going with the expert that the uh, prosecution brought. And now this like, why was she part-time or had multiple responsibilities, et cetera. That's, that's again, you're, you're pressing yourself down the path of she didn't do the armor job appropriately for whatever mm -hmm. reason. That's where both of those tacks take you. So I don't know why you're also, I mean, this is, the, to my mind, too, this is the correct line of questioning. You said that you had no concerns. You thought that she did a good job, you know, and then and then maybe, like, that whole, so you said that she, you know, let's talk about the weapon the day of the 21st and how that all evolved. Let's walk through that, depending on how much the prosecution did that, that we haven't had time to watch uh, together today, but... Yeah, I don't know why he keeps chasing both. Like, covering your ass in two directions doesn't always work. It often just confuses things. Thank you! That is a really good way of putting it. Really good way of putting it. I did not expect the TLDR of this trial to take as long as it has. Um, <laughs> we're doing very good, but yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to give you a little longer, and then I'm going to pull you down, find the next spot. When on the, let's just give an example, there'd be a day where gun, guns were going to be used and Ms. Gutierrez Reed was present as armor. Would she ask you to do weapons checks with her? Yes. Okay. And sir, when she does a weapons check with you, is that to open and show you the barrel and make sure there's no barrel obstructions? Yes. And I think you described it's earlier that with the revolver, you could see down through it. The light goes through, you could see through the barrel. Yes. Okay. Um, now, <sighs> you also recall Ms. Gutierrez Reed had a tool to push down the barrel to make sure there's no obstructions? I don't recall seeing okay. that tool. But she was, would you describe her as uh, very diligent in that process when there was a weapons check required that she would do that with you? Yes. Okay. And That's it. Stop. Just stop. Now focus on Dave Hulse. 
<laughs> but what does he actually do? Do you know of any um, uh, any instance before the 21st where she did not do those weapons checks? No. When they no. None whatsoever. Okay. Um, okay, fine. That worked I out know okay. That you would have safety meetings. Now, would you have those every day of the set? We did not have them every day. Okay. And I know sometimes you Why have not? emails that Why? people wanted to what have safety did meetings. You have them? Yes. Okay. And at one of the safety meetings, do you remember Ms. Gutierrez Reed helping you with a presentation uh, as part of the briefing? On, on day one, the, the first day, yes. Okay, sir. And did you, what did you think about her presentation regarding the gun portion? I was very impressed with how she. Thank you. Was very, Next question. She did, took control of the situation. It was very clear and very instructive and communicated everything very clearly. What and, went and wrong? And confidently. Okay, and confidently. In your experience, having observed Armors in 10 other films, did she come across as seeming competent in what she was doing? She did. And did she come across as seeming knowledgeable about firearms? She did. Okay. okay. Um, you said that was the first day. Do you recall there being a training for uh, a gun training specifically for the actors and crew? Before the, the, the shooting um, schedule started, there was a day devoted to Ms. Gutierrez training actors. Okay, sir. And, and were you present at that? I was. And what was okay. your what was your impression of that training? Said, uh, impressed. She was confident. Uh, there were some male actors, um, and she was didn't seem to be intimidated by them, and and that they were. I felt that they respected her. Uh, did you participate in that training? I was just an observer. Okay. Mm. I can't. Ladies and gentlemen, oh. these sounds, this is what happens when you simultaneously break my brain for the 47th time and Manny's brain. She did such a great job. There were men in the room and it was like she still carried on. Oh, wow. That's... Mm -hmm. What? And we've seen, we have seen, we've seen all of those video clips of Baldwin acting like like he's everybody in this mm -hmm. production mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i also i mean again i know we've we've paused and maybe we do go there but if you're gonna pursue this line of questioning about her day of training then you need to know that she established protocols with the actors that do you know and follow that up okay so she established the protocols she did a great job she wasn't intimidated by the men <laughs> um fabulous so then you know what at what point did actors stop following? Like, you need to follow this line of questioning to its logical conclusion, or else you need to not have started down this road. I'm sorry, because all it's done so far is make me go, well, then what the f happened between pre-filming, day of training, and what we've been seeing? My where where did it all go horribly wrong? Biggest frustration with this man is that he walks up to the, the and then, the correct next question, every, the jurors are on the edge of their seat. Everyone in the room and most of the internet is going, why? Where? When? The five <laughs> W's, how? sir. The five the five W's and how. Yeah. One of those words is at the forefront of our mind and you make a hard left and go somewhere else. Somewhere entirely unhelpful, typically, so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To the entire case and things. I. Hannah, but is it worth us watching more of this or and seeing where he makes that hard turn? Or should we yeah. just call this? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Why not? What will. Are we going to get through this in two parts? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's find out. Shall I speed him up a little bit? The only way to find out is to do it, right? So here we go. So, <laughs> I'm in see the if time I can... that you saw her doing armor duties, um, you, you didn't have any complaints about her. No. Okay. <laughs> now, Mr. Halls, you know that she was also doing props duties. Did you ever witness her doing specific props duties like rolling cowboy cigarettes or propping up actors? Or... I, rec I recall seeing her helping in, in propping up actors, yes. Okay. Uh, we... Uh, we saw some videos earlier today of, of some of the scenes, and it looked like there was fairly um, gun-heavy scenes at times. 
Uh, and so there would be a lot of people walking around, some people holding weapons. Do you recall that? Yes, it did. There were, yes. Okay. Now, there, there were a couple instances where it appeared that muzzles were getting, of, of weapons were getting traced across people. Um, now, do you recall anything like that? Can you clear? Sure. Mod, there was mod. some te testimony but and, and some videos where, for example, a stuntman was holding a, a weapon and he was kind of turning around and, and it was coming across the muzzle across other people. Mm -hmm. Do you recall anything like that? I don't recall anything. Okay. Sir, this does not help your client. Reminding the jury. Well, if the idea was to get his perspective, David's perspective on why that was allowed or something, then maybe, maybe it would help. But, you know, all I, all I can think of is, and I don't remember honestly where I heard this advice, whether it was actually from a real live lawyer in my world as a young person or in some fictional scenario, but I still agree with it. You should never ask a question you don't know the answer to. Uh -huh. And that that certainly seems like a question he did not know the answer to. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Did, uh, I'm going to let you continue, Bulls. Um, I'm mad at you. Some of those like it appeared you were present on the videos. But you, do you yeah. remember any instances where you felt like there was an unsafe condition with the way people were pointing their muzzles? I, I did not. I did not. What what were you on, sir, that day or any of those days? Do you have a twin or another personality that we could speak to? Um, I do not mean to make light of that. I just, I don't know how else you explain that he was visible in the recordings we've seen and recalls none of that. Unless, I mean, unless you know nothing about handling prop weapons which I suppose yeah. is possible. But looking at your IMDb page, it looks like you've worked on sh on movies like at least one of the Matrix movies. Mm, Feels like you yeah. would have learned a thing or two as an AD or even a second unit director uh, on those. So you think. anyway, I'm, I'm, I should have watched this with you like <laughs> all day, every day. <laughs> We would never have gotten off the phone and probably both would have lost our jobs, but man, we would have had fun. We, we would have had so much fun. <laughs> we had so much fun. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, here is my question. We are going to play a game. Mandy, what do you think? We have approximately half an hour to, we have approximately half an hour to get through the rest of day six, day seven. No, the rest of day six. We've only made it. We're still on day six. Oh We're my still god! On day six. Um, I feel like we have a part three happening. I, I feel like it too. Um, but let's let's see if we can. I mean, let's at least get through day six and see if we can. Day seven in there. I don't know. We only did day six. We only did day six. I'm going to swoop and find Sarah Zachary. We're going to we're going to jump ahead to No, you know what we're going to do? We are going to jump right ahead to Sarah Zachary's cross. Okay. Because we're just going to skip over the prosecution. It's a lot of who are you? Props person. Did you do this? Blah blah blah. And you know what got missed? Everybody was wondering, does she or does she not have an immunity deal? Oh. Bulls actually does his job for once. No. So I Bring am it. going to let Bulls do his job. So I'm gonna swoop and we're gonna we're gonna tech. Okay. I'm I'm teching, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. I am I am teching. And you know, I think it's a fair bet that we're going to be doing similar things around the Baldwin trial when that happens. So if there are things that you're enjoying that we're talking about, or things that you're like, hey, you could have skipped that as much fun as you guys clearly were having, put that in the chat. We're learning. 
Or I'm learning yes. anyway. Yes. <laughs> I'm learning when to shut up. That's really my uh, my whole thing. So uh me skipping ahead no 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 come down come down let me do this not I, I can pretend like i'm a professional i absolutely can pretend like i know what i'm doing um Don't yeah let us know professional armor <laughs> that <'Cause men> badly. <laughs> the other thing with this as we're doing the tldr is i am going to put up a poll of what we are going to do um because we're definitely doing a part three that is happening. And I'm going to put up a poll for what we do after because Baldwin's attorneys dropped 700 pages in motions the other day. Yeah, that. Get, uh, get that. Burying them in paperwork has never felt so literal. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. If you so, haven't seen a few good men, that's literally like. Yeah, it's a thing. Anyway. Yes. Yes. So, and some of his his attorney's stuff is uh, something. It is something. So, I want to know, is that something that you want us to go over? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're definitely doing a part three. Tech, me and tech, me and tech. You can All right. Do this. this is Sarah Zachary. We're we're gonna go over cross, and yeah. And I okay. have one point two five. I'm trying to zoom. Yes. And that's with PDQ prompts. Correct. No, I need to hear the actual question, sir. Come back here. And you agreed to come in and testify against Ms. Gutierrez Reed. Is that, is that correct? Yes. Mm. And ladies and gentlemen, I am teching to the best of my ability. Back up, back up. There. There. All right. Good morning, jurors. I'm getting better at this. Seated. But I am not great. But I'm getting better. Getting better. So this is quickly. This is day seven. This is day seven. We have okay. reached day seven. Yes. Playback speed. Good morning, Ms. Zachary. Good morning. Ms. Zachary, in, I'm speeding in, him up. in this case, you agreed to cooperate with the state. Is that true? Yes. And you agreed to come in and testify against Ms. Gutierrez Reed. Is that, is that correct? Yes. And as part of that, you entered into a cooperation agreement with the state. Is that right? Yes. And that cooperation agreement indicates that if you agree to testify and you have to provide truthful testimony, that you will not be prosecuted for any crime. Is that right? Yes. So as part of your being here, you have a complete immunity from being prosecuted, correct? I guess. Well. Yes. yes. Sorry, I'm closer. Well, uh, it's okay. Is that better? Uh, is that your understanding of the document that you have a complete, that you're not going to be prosecuted, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, you testified she yesterday terrified. that you had, uh, as far as the props roles, you were Hannah's boss in that role. Is that right? I when I say boss, I guess a supervisor. What I said goes with props. And Hannah was a props assistant, correct? Part-time. Okay. And she was also a part-time armor? Uh, Full-time. Uh, your understanding, she was part-time props, and full-time armor? Armor was her main duty, yes. Okay, but she was also doing props as well, correct? When there was no firing of any guns, yes. Well, didn't you ask her on several occasions, for example, to uh, do things like rolling cowboy cigarettes? Uh, that was one day. Well, you asked her to prop up other characters at, at times, right? Uh, the only props that other characters had were the guns. They didn't have uh, their belts? Uh, well, yeah, they had belts. And they didn't have, for example, uh, glasses or other items that they needed to have on them? What type of glasses are you talking about? Uh, anything you'd have in a Western movie, hats, glasses, they didn't have other props? Those are wardrobe. Okay. What other yes. props were there Correct. with regard to these actors besides firearms? Um, there were very miscellaneous things depending on the scene. There was a day where 
we were in a saloon, there were whiskey glasses, there were rolled cigarettes, um, there were a poker sets, those kind of things. And those props had to be provided to those actors, correct? Um, yes. Okay. And, and you also testified that you had some armor duties, correct? Correct. And so you were in that role assisting Ms. Gutierrez Reed, right? Correct. And as part of that, you loaded and unloaded guns on the set? Correct. Now, you were trained, I think you said, by, by Seth Kenny in a prior film? Yes. How much training did you receive from Seth Kenny? I had maybe 10 days to prep for that set. So within that amount of time, when I would meet him, he would show me how to work with the guns and ammo. So did you feel proficient, uh, very good in working with guns and ammo? In what I was using, yes. Were you, I think you said in the past, and you can tell me if you disagree, that you were not able to tell a dummy round from a live round? Mm, I don't recall saying that. Okay. Now, yesterday you testified that you weren't familiar with the single action uh, revolver. Is that right? I didn't say, or are you talking about when I entered or started rest? Yes. Yes. And so as we sit here today, do you know the difference? If you want to see an excellent breakdown of somebody who understands firearms effectively losing their mind at her testimony, I highly recommend going to Runkle of the Bailey and watching his recaps. Um, I think her testimony broke him in certain ways <laughs> because we we are full wrong answers only with her yeah. and yeah. firearms. Full wrong answers only. Well, the whole, like, that was loud. Didn't you ask Hannah to, you know, prop up other actors and da-da-da? Well, there weren't any other props except for guns and, you know, and then, well, what kind of props were there? How many things did she name? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Also, the whole glasses. Glasses are part of costumes. I I mean, unless the attorney literally was like glasses, I, I assumed he was talking about glasses because those would be props. And then she said that there were glasses in the saloon. I don't, I can't. Oh, um, the defense attorney's tie keeps distracting me. <laughs> Somebody needs to teach him how to like tuck the back end into the front end so that it's not, here's my tie, but here's the little tail of my tie. <laughs> it's kind of out here. Like I, couldn't, just... I wasn't even listening to him for a full 15 seconds. So I went. <laughs> and why are we doing a part of her? Because even if I skip over direct examination with this woman, I the the cross is. Uh, I, 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 uh, Between a single action and a double action. Uh, yes, now I do. Okay, and what is that difference? Well, the, what we were using on rest uh, between the two, uh, it involves um, how you load them and unload them. From well, my understanding, the, the difference in functional characteristics between a single action and a double action. Um, so with the single action revolver, I believe that's what we were working on with Russ. Um, that was with, uh, um, cocking the hammer back and the trigger at the same time to, uh, load and unload the cylinder. Whereas. No, wrong, no. wrong, wrong answer. No. And you wonder why. Mm. Oh, with the double action, uh, that the cylinder flips out. The cylinder flips out. Sorry, uh, you. Um, the cylinder comes out on the side to load the revolver and closes back. Before Rust, had you worked with a single action type revolver? No. So on the prior set with Mr. Kenny, he had just shown you a double action? Yes. Okay. Um, so with uh, yourself and Mrs. Gutierrez, you, know Reed, you about also guns. had Nicole Montoya helping, is that right? Correct. And Nicole Montoya was also a props assistant, is that right? Yes. Now, I think you said yesterday that uh, you uh, yes, you Hannah, knew that, that there was going that to be thing. an armor and an armor's assistant. Did you say that? I knew that Hannah was going to act as both. Okay. Was it your understanding that on this film that there was supposed to be an armor and an armor's assistant at first? Yes. Okay. Now, um, with regard to your armor duties, you, we know that you loaded and unloaded weapons. Did you also um, take those at times to the actors? Yes. And I think we saw a video yesterday where, and see if you remember the scene, Mr. Baldwin is coming out of a little structure. He's shooting towards the cameras up at the blank round. He runs up the hill with the child actor, and then he gets and somebody else cut, and he still shoots, and then he cusses. Do you remember that scene? Um, yeah, I believe so, yes. 
I do believe it was Joel Souza that cussed, not Baldwin. Yeah, it was I, cut, yeah, fire, I motherfucker. Mother. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I wholeheartedly empathized with. <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. I hope that the moment is shown like 27 times in his trial. I really do. Yeah, that was the most empathetic moment I've had in what we've watched so far. Was <laughs> like, yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cheers. That. And it appeared, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you were on that video running towards Mr. Baldwin after he shot. Is that, is that what happened? I'd have to see the video. Okay. I bet you don't recollect it right now as we sit here. Not at the moment. Okay. On how many occasions did you yourself take firearms to actors? Um, whenever Hannah needed it. Okay. When she needed assistance? Yes. Okay. You were... No. Wrong answer. No. Bad. Bad set. Bad set. Working under Seth Kenny's license, is that correct? Yes. And that's with PDQ Props? Correct. And as part of that, are you on his paperwork as being an employee? Uh, I believe so. And so you weren't actually working at physically at his business, but you were on, on the paperwork, you were working with PDQ Props. Is that fair to say? You would have to ask him about his paperwork, now, sir. I don't know. Yesterday, you indicated that first you said that you had thrown away the revolvers, but that was just a miss. Uh, you just got ahead of yourself. Is that right? Yes. Okay. I, I should have what, I should what, have what? covered this. I'm sorry. What? I should have covered this. And yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize. This was in um, direct. Under no, direct. no, don't apologize. I'm sorry that I'm not versed in the way I, that you are. I, I I was trying to zoom zoom. Um, but yeah, no. She she threw things away after the. After, after the incident, or before, after, uh huh. Wow! It turns out that it seems like it. Uh, yeah, they were just they were just throwing things away that you don't throw away. And I at this point I don't yeah. even remember mm -hmm. if it was ammo or uh, weapons, but those are not things that go in the trash. I, th I think Bull's just the uh, gun. He I did. And I can't. It was. It was a one of the rifles. I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, as we all do, when just, a crime, or or even just a death has occurred, you definitely find things that could have been part of the problem and throw them away. Yep. Yeah. Don't do that. We we are being sarcastic for those of you who cannot see our faces or hear the sarcasm. Um, yeah. That is that is sarcasm, and don't 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 do that the, again. What the people in charge on the set of Rust did is just a general example of don't do that. Just yeah. from start to finish, no bad. Bad, bad Hollywood children. We need no. a very big rolled up newspaper to whack them on the nose. <laughs> no. no. We don't throw evidence away. No. 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 Oh, my heavens. Sorry. Sorry, Sarah. Sorry. I I, I don't know what I'm doing with my pause game, but I'm I'm on it. Yeah, so. no, you are. You're, you are capturing the essences. With your pause game, it's I'm a little shady. Record. I shouldn't be this shady with my pause game, but whatever. I'm a shady queen. <laughs> In reality, uh, what you What's did is you threw away rounds from two revolvers. Is that correct? Correct. And that was right. Uh, that was after the shooting, correct? Yes. Now, after the shooting, do you recall how many minutes uh, went by, just roughly, before you threw away those rounds? I don't recall. In that time frame, you also had a conversation with Seth Kenny, correct? Yes. And on that conversation, you had texted him previously before that and said emergency? After the incident, yes. And then you, you all talked, and do you recall him giving you any instruction or advice as to what you were calling about? And don't, don't tell what he said, but do you recall him giving you any information? No. Okay. This is an excellent time, sir, to bring in the evidence if we have their phone evidence now would yeah. be the time to introduce it. If you get it, and you should have gotten it, and if you didn't get it, I have questions. And if you did get it, 
now 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 is the time now 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 well and also like now. i don't recall any advice well then what did you talk about on that call thank you yeah the Ooh. And that's how you bring in, like, here's the evidence that you texted that you and you were on the phone for X amount of minutes with this person. So what was that conversation? Attorneys, attorneys, any attorneys listening. Here's what I want you to do when you are prepping for trial or cross examination or something like that. Go through your firm. Find somebody um, that is interested in this stuff but is not a legal assistant or a paralegal I promise it like just just find somebody who is your potential average juror in your building i promise you service assistants accounting marketing you've got you've got a wealth of folks in your firm that you can find or even you know the coffee shop where you get coffee you know what i want you to do i want you to go with a list of like little synopsis questions and then say, what is your, like ask question, answer, question, answer. What questions do you have to your willing barista? I mean, ask for permission first, but your willing barista or your staff person, ask them, you know, why? Cause they aren't thinking in legal. So they are going to return with a question that they want to know. You know what that's going to help you with? Your jury. Because the entire jury is sitting there going, what the what the what just happened? Did I hear that right? There are guns just being thrown. So, yeah, they're the ones that are going to say why or what. So just just an exercise. If you do that and you have a trial, let me know how that works out for you. Because now I'm genuinely curious. I think it would help. Well, yeah, particularly for a jury trial. But also, I mean, I, I just in general, unless somebody with legal expertise is the one ruling, uh, you know, on the guilt or innocence of your client. Or mm -hmm. or if you're prosecuting the guilt or innocence of, of the defendant. I yeah this what we've watched doesn't help <laughs> there's there's very little there is there was a well to get a couple of things right but there was very little of it that was actually helpful and even when it was helpful it was like oh, i see where you were going with that thread but then you just dropped it uh-huh you know <laughs> the whole the whole trial with bulls yes 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 why you <laughs> Why are we over there? I didn't <laughs> want to be over there. I was I was here with you. What? I'm looking at the clock. I'm realizing we probably need to wind down. I guess we'll leave it there for Sarah. Um, I failed. I I I failed at getting this into two parts. <laughs> we failed first of all, and second of all, yeah, I many soapbox opportunities today it's, so i i forgot that we get into sarah zachary and joel souza and seth kenny at the end and the prosecution's terrible terrible attempt at the evidence tampering charge with hannah so um day day eight and day nine like day eight and day nine can be sort of sort of squishy um, I should swoop before we wrap up. I should, I should swoop. I should have swooped yeah. five seconds ago. I apologize. I think we both need to promise to stop apologizing for ourselves all the time. We do. We, we, do. we do that too much. We're not we, sorry. Okay. This is, this is what you get when you get us on the screen. What uh, both of us wonder, this is what happens. Hi guys. Hi, welcome to what our other friends experience all of the time when I am filling Mandy in on a trial or something that I have <laughs> just been obsessed with for a period of time. Y'all are lucky that we did not have a YouTube channel during Deb Heard, or maybe not. Oh my I don't gosh. know. Maybe if, if, <sighs> could have been fun. Could have been fun. It could, it could have been fun. It could have been fun. 
There is a chance. If anybody wants us to get into a little time machine and go back and do that, I'm happy to do that. Um, I I will not willingly do it because there's so many other things happening. Yes. But if you want us to time machine, or at least me, anyway, we 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 can time machine. Um, cause we were in Atlantic city during Depp Heard at one point for my birthday. <laughs> I'm sitting there in a hotel room, two of my best friends also in the hotel room, an entire city of fun and <laughs> vices out there. And what am I doing? I am avidly listening and watching it every now and then screaming obscenities at the iPad with... <laughs> <laughs> my friends going what is happening so welcome this this is what happens this is this was just happening in a hotel room with no camera mic you know that kind of thing Indeed. So, um to rep before we so we're gonna do part three i think we can cover day eight nine and ten well the second half of day seven day six and seven were a lot yeah, clearly Clearly. Like a lot. Um, we will do a part three. I will drop that next. We're dropping them on Sunday. So next Sunday, part three will hit. I'm trying to keep this normal. And then keep an eye out on the page for poll. I want to know, do you want us to go through the Baldwin documents? Because I do know how to get them. Um, that would be a deep dive, not an attempt at a TLDR. And this is TLDR, by the way. If you want full recaps, um, Emily D. Baker covered the whole thing live. There's a playlist. Go find it. If you want um, daily recaps that don't that aren't not watching the trial live, and even if you if you want both angles, uh, Runkle of the Bailey, highly recommend. Both of them. Uh, this is where I went and watched things. So um, the chats are great and uh, they provide amazing coverage for it. So, yeah, that. Um, I think Recovery Attic also covered it because everybody covered this. Um, but, yeah, those are those are for the daily deep dives. So, yes, this is TLDR, even though it doesn't seem like it. Um <laughs> No, I mean, if you think about how long a day of testimony is, we're covering so such short little chunks. So, yeah, we are. Yeah. We are. Um, so let us know. I will put up a poll um, if I can figure out how to do that. I can and I will. Uh, but I will put up a poll of do we cover Baldwin? Um, the Baldwin motions after this. Do we cover something else entirely? Um, and if if the vote is overwhelmingly something else entirely, please be sure in the comments to um, let me know what I should go hunting up because that I'm, I'm a curious little kitty and we'll go <laughs> hunt things up. Um, and there's also all sorts of stuff popping off right now with one of the other cases that I am super fascinated by. So I'm going to go do that deep dive on the side uh, when we wrap up here. So. Mandy, have I forgotten anything? I don't think so. Okay. Thanks have for coming with us on this three-part journey. <laughs> yes. I, you know, for us, two parts into three parts, that's pretty good. That's like, you know, our average. That's our average. So we'll take it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have to go do all of the post-production stuff that never involves editing because we record live because I'm lazy. Um, <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> and so I have I have to go do all of that so that I can upload this for you on tomorrow. Tomorrow. We're recording it on Saturday, so I'll upload it tomorrow. Do the YouTube things. That was the other thing. Sorry, my brain. My brain buffered. <laughs> Do the YouTube -y thing. Okay, I'm going to hit the button. I am going to hit the outro. We are going to see you next week for part three. Leave, leave the love, and we'll see you next week, guys. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Unfiltered Tea. Don't forget.
forget to hit that like button. If you have a story you want our unfiltered take on, go ahead and drop it in the comments and we will see you next.